and the next important kind of landforms associated with cycle of erosion are glacial landforms. Glaciers are mainly two types. A glacier is simply a moving mass of ice and there are two types mainly. One is continental glacier and the one is valley glacier. Continental glaciers are found in regions like Antarctica, Greenland etc where the whole uh, continents are completely filled with ice caps. And Iceland is the biggest continental ice shield. The valley, valley glaciers are found in alpine mountain system like the Himalayas, Alps etc. And a glacier is a moving mass of ice. The most the in the erosional process, the most important process is played by glaciers because the glacial erosion is the ones that supplies the debris to, to the fluvial uh, uh, erosion. That is to rivers. Rivers receive all their silt from uh, mainly from glacial ero glacially eroded material like in Himalayas. The glaciers are charged with rock debris. That is due to intense amount of pressure and weight. The ice carries a lot of debris below it that is it carries huge rocks these huge rocks keep on striking against the lower strata hence lot of there is lot of wear and tear in the lower strata and there is huge amount of debris which flows from lower strata this is because of uh, pressure inserted uh, exerted by glaciers and the one impo important glacier in india is siachen glacier which is in border with pakistan and china and the glaciers become significant because they are the main sources for rivers like uh, Gangotri for Ganga, Emunotri for Emuna, etc. And even rivers like Brahmaputra, which originate near Kailash Range, are mostly served by glacial waters. So, glaciers play a very important role in uh, charging rivers with both debris as well as water. And coming to erosion, erosional landforms associated with glaciers, these are the major erosional landforms glacial troughs, creeks. Tarn Lake, Hans, Ariti, and then Hanging Valleys, and waterfalls here and there. Let's take a look at all the erosional landforms in detail. The first one is Creek or Kori, which is a hollow basin which is covered on three sides by land, that is, slope of the river, a slope of the mountain, and on one side it is open for the water to flow. And once the ice in this uh, creek melts, then it gives rise to a shape called Tarn, which is very similar to creeks but they contain uh, ice uh, instead of ice they contain water and the next one is glacial trough glacial trough is a stream which is formed due to vertical erosion as well as lateral erosion in the whole the glacial erosion both lateral and vertical erosion plays a significant role hence most of the valleys which are found we see they are in u shaped because of both vertical and lateral erosional processes and hanging valleys are, the re are simply valleys which are present for smaller uh, tributaries. This is the valley of major tributary which is extended U shaped one. <coughs> Whereas the other one is in the shape of U but with, which is at higher terrain compared to the glacial trough. Hence this is called a hanging valley. And Ariti is a ridge which is formed due to erosion on both sides of the uh, peak or ridge. As erosion becomes intense in both these regions, they take out a lot of uh, alluvium or silt in the form of uh, glacial uh, debris and the center region which is not ero eroded remains in the form of ridge which is called as Ariti. And when this Ariti is uh, eroded on multiple sides, it gives rise to a structure called on which represents a, which resembles a peak. And deep jord is one uh, area, <coughs> is, a la is a kind of a structure where which is become similar to a river valley as you can see in this figure except that all the glacial uh, all the glacial debris flows through this uh, valley into the sea these kind of structures are found only in few countries like New Zealand and Scandinavian nations where glacial action is important and they are rare in Antarctic and Arctic other uh, Greenland other regions and the next ones are marine landforms Intensity of marine erosion, erosion depends on various uh, features like size and strength of waves. For example, waves, uh, waves are much higher in size in northern, uh, southern hemisphere compared to northern hemisphere because of less land mass in southern hemisphere which facilitates uh, wind flow waves at high velocities. And seaward slope also matters that is whether the sea is surrounded by a plain or uh, a steep sides. And height of the shore between low and high tides. High tides 
greatly influenced the formation of marine landforms gulf of uh, california red sea which and such regions where the seas are enclosed the tides are much higher hence the landforms here are greatly influenced by sea tides and the composition of rocks and other soils uh, around the sea also matters and depth of water which facilitates ocean currents also plays a major role in marine erosion and coming to erosional landforms the major erosional landforms are sea cliffs wave cut terraces blow holes sea arch sea cave sea stack and terrace kind of uh, landform and sea cliffs are the ones which are seaward limit of the coast they are formed due to successive erosional processes where the higher standing landform is successively eroded from bottom to top giving rise to a structure like sea cliff which stands uh, higher compared to the uh, sea level and these cliffs get eroded gradually and the wave level out the waves level out the shore region that is the waves started leveling out shore region like in here and the sea cliff like structures remains uh, remains for a longer period of time and the wave cut platform is just a platform which is formed due to successive uh, erosion of sea cliffs for example when a river when the level of the sea was here then this was a sea cliff then and due to successive erosion and the upliftment of the land the sea level has fallen and we can see there are many sea cliffs one one above the above leaving a terrace like structure this is formed mainly due to differential erosion due to subsidence of sea or upliftment of landform and blow holes or sporting horns horns are another important landforms which are absorbed uh, where the beaches are rocky due to holes in these rock like structures the pressure exerted by the uh, sea waves is seen as a small explosions in these blow holes and other important landforms are sea caves sea arch and sea stack which are more or less formed by the same way due to differential erosion sea cliffs where the strata is weak is eroded giving a wave like uh, sorry a cave like structure called as sea cave and if this sea cave like structure is take is formed in between the ocean then it gives like gives rise to arch structure which is called sea arch and when one side of the arch is broken and falls apart in into the sea then the remaining uh, section is seen in the form of sea stack and coming to depositional landforms the most uh, major depositional landforms are bar and bay barrier lagoons or sometimes estuaries barrier spit tumbulu and beach the most important of all is beach beach is accumulation of uh, minute sediment which is left after the wave action and beaches are the main salient features which are important tourist uh, attractions and tumbulu is a region where a bar or a marine debris is connected to a small island like a bridge and this bridge like structure is called as tumbulu and a bar is one it is a part of a submerged debris which is found below uh the overlying debris and this overlying debris is called bay barrier and the bay barrier might sometime enclose a water body which is called lagoon which is mainly consists of saline water one example is chilka lake in india it is separated from the sea from this small bar barrier and other one is barrier spit barrier spit is simply the debris which is accumulated which, and it is connected to one side of the beach whereas other side remains open for the water to enter and this kind of structure is called as barrier spit and coastlines are classified into different categories mainly coastline of emergence coastline of submergence and based on the presence of these two kind of coastlines or absence so one is neutral coastline other one is compound coastline and there is another coastline called as fault coastline which is different from these kind of coastlines coming to coastline of emergence and submergence it is simply formed when whether the sea level goes below our sea level goes above if the sea level goes above then the, some part of the land is submerged this gives rise to a coastline of submergence at the same time when sea level falls and when sea level recedes backwards then we can see the appearance of uh, the coastline which was further uh, before uh, covered by the sea and this kind of coastline is called as coastline of emergence this coastline of emergence or submergence are found mainly due to sub subsidence in sea level or the upliftment or uh, subsidence of landforms
both cases are possible and the main kind of landforms formed by coastline of emergence are bass spits lagoons salt beaches marshes marshes sea cliffs etc and in the coastline of subsidence there are other kind of landforms namely ria jod dalmantin and other kind of other landforms you can see these are examples of jod and ria ria is a smaller version of jod and this kind of coastline that is coastline of emergence is mainly found in east coast of india especially in the southeastern uh, part that is near in the coastline of tamil nadu and southern coast of western co western uh, coastline is also uh, part of coastline of emergence for example kerala coast and the coastline of submergence is only found along the northwestern coast that is mumbai gujarat coast for example run of kutch is an example for coastline of submergence and coming to neutral coastlines these coastlines are the ones where both submergence and emergence are completely zero that is there is no submergence or emergence these coastlines give like give rise to kind of uh, regions like deltas which remain there for millions of years for example for a delta to be formed it needs to be the region needs to be stable for millions of years thus neutral coastlines facilitate the formation of uh, deltas etc and also volcano coastlines coral reef coral reef coastline like in australia are also examples of neutral co coastlines and other one is compound coastline where both uh, submergence and emergence take place and these kind of coastlines are mostly found in uh, in the coast of norway and sweden and the fault coastlines coastlines are very rare where a block is upthrusted or uh, undergo subsidence giving rise to a fault coast like in this figure a block may be uplifted or it can subside the neighboring block and subside giving rise to a fault coastline and the next important landforms are arid landforms the cycle of erosion in arid land landforms is mainly carried out by wind and these are the major uh, forms or uh, landforms which are formed due in arid landforms we can see some of these are erosional in nature whereas others like barchans are depositional ones and if you see erosional landforms few rocks are found in desert regions which are shaped in the form of mushroom or umbrella shaped these are called mushroom rocks this is these are found mainly due to differential erosion for example wind carries more sand at the bottom uh, at the near the surface as a result the surface the rock at the surface undergoes more erosion and dabao rock which is at a height from the surface undergoes uh, differential or less ero erosion as a result it gives rise to a mushroom like uh, structure the other one is damsels these are formed in the same way like mushroom rocks except that their shapes are quite different and coming to major erosional landforms in arid regions we can see the most important one is the plateau which is a flat area with steep cliffs and narrow valleys the plateau has a very hard rock on the surface as a result erosion here becomes less significant and below the harder rock strata this rock strata is softer but as it is uh, as it is supported by harder rock strata it is protected and doesn't undergo much erosion but over a million, millions of years erosion in this kind of rocks to be can be significant hence uh, under influence of erosion there is one more kind of plateau which is formed which is called as mesa it is simply an isolated plateau and wadis are simply dry gullies or river beds eroded by occasional flash floods that is a river like gully structures which is formed at the base due to huge amount of rains which carry out uh, which carry out erosional processes along the valley floor is called as wadi and butte is much smaller version of mesa which gives like to a dome like structure iselberg is a resistant rock which is uh, which stands tall and undergoes differential erosion as a result this remains over a long period of time and it is quite different compared to the uh, surrounding structures pediment is simply the deposition of uh, deposition of all that debris which is uh, eroded by wind water etc which settles just below all these structures like plateaus and then mesa or butte we can see these sediments are called as Pediment, which are called which, uh, these are called pediments the other important landform is palaya palaya is formed uh, due to accumulation of water during rains 
and it gives like uh, rise to occasional lake which is called palaya and bajadas are another important regions which are formed between the fans or alluvial fans which are alluvial fans these are the alluvial fans where most of the silt is deposited and between due to coalescence the of these kind of fans we can see these three fans coalesce coalescence of these three fans gives rise to a landform called as bajada and oases are other important uh, features of uh, deserts these are not erosional landforms but they are important features and bachans are depositional landforms we'll see in detail and few other basic uh, erosional landforms in arid areas are seen like rill gully ravine badland gorge and canyon rill is simply a small stream of uh, a water flow structure which is left after intense erosional processes and these rills becomes bigger and gives rise to gullies and gullies for where vertical erosion is significant the base of the gully is completely eroded giving rise to a structure called ravine and and many such ravines over a mountain topography give rise to a bad badland topography as you can see in this figure there are many gullies and ravines all along the slope of these mountains and gorge is the extended version of ravine where a v shaped valley is pr prominent and canyon is a u shaped or slightly bigger version of gorge where due to successive erosion these blocks fall into the sea and uh, into the river and these are successively eroded and in canyon though it is a kind of v shaped valleys but still the upper parts uh, upper sections are divided by much large distances that is upper landforms are divided by much larger distances for example great uh, grand canyon in uh, along colorado river in uh, usa is one good example and there are few rocks we have seen mushroom and damsels other ones are jejuan which are bigger version of mushroom rocks and adangs which are simply ridge like structures which are found in semi arid to arid regions which uh, which are a continuous ridge shaped uh, landforms these are mostly seen in china that is near gobi desert and coming to depositional landforms sand dunes and loess are the important depositional landforms sand dunes are mostly found in intense desert landforms like sahara thar etc whereas loess are found in semi desert to arid landforms loess are an example sedimentary deposits which are found mostly in gobi desert and the final ones is karst landforms or the landforms formed by uh, erosional processes in limestone sediments uh, different landforms are as seen in this figure stalactite and stalagmite are important examples for depositional kinds of karst landforms whereas other ones are uh, erosional in nature karst window is a cave like structure which is formed due to differential erosion and the biggest structure of karst window is called cavern Sinkhole is simply a hole in which water completely disappears. This water flows below the limestone sediments where there are numerous streams inside. This is sinkhole and bogas are more or less just uh, other version of sinkholes where even here the water disappears when the water flows into these regions. This is because limestone sediments has, uh, are porous in nature that is there are huge amount of pores as a result uh, after a certain period of time the water starts seeping in through these pores and reaches the ground levels uh, below the surface as a result in limestone sediments water disappears in the form of sinkholes and bogas and this is the end of cycle of erosion and associated landforms